so the, the styrofoam was on the end of there to help give it form until the mache is on and dries. It doesn't even need to be secured down. I just want it to hold this mesh up so it's not like this because that's hard to, I could mache that, but it's a little easier if it's connected. So that's all that's there for. Um, I can come back and put longer staples through to hold that down. But that's kind of what I'm looking for there. So I can, like where wants to pop up there, I can put a staple in. And then it is not going to pop up anymore. like that. Now it has some curves to it. I'll just keep on going. Okay, you've seen me use this before. This is a pre-made styrofoam rock. Uh, I can use this and I can cut it out. I could use a knife, uh, but I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and use that. That's the easiest way, I think. So I'm just going to tack that down with this, and then I'll screw it in. There, and then we'll screw that on. So they're slightly recessed so you can fill them, but this is going to get filled up along here. have to bring that. I don't know, I may end up putting another rock here just for aesthetics. So there's a, like right here. That'll be a rock for the sake of a rock. Serving no other purpose than we just want an extra rock in there. This down. Okay, we've got this uh, screwed down and glued down to the subframe, and now we need to mix up our uh, mache. The difference in this one from the last one is this rock is going to be made totally, the main rock, the big one, is going to be made sculpted totally from the mache. So I'm curious how that's going to work. I've got plenty of curves and, and, and you know, outcroppings on the rock. I'm just curious how it's going to work. I used the, the, the styrofoam rocks for these two, obviously but this one's going to be mache, so that'll be a little bit different. Um, and we're going to see how that works. I've done this in other videos, so I'm not going to get too in-depth, but 
Uh, this is the mache, and I mixed it myself. You could buy it pre-mixed and spend a lot more money, or you can use blowing it uh, paper insulation, cellulose insulation that comes in bulk, and you can use joint compound. This is a 90-minute joint compound, so it gives you a little more time to work with it. Um, it's about equal parts uh, by volume of joint compound and mache or paper, roughly. So. Just kind of putting this on, kind of glooping it on, and then moving it around with my fingers where I want it. It's probably not more than a quarter inch, definitely not more than a quarter inch thick in most spots. Um, if I need a little more to cover wires that are sticking out, or I'll add it, or to create the ridges I want. But for the most part, it's probably, it's less than a quarter inch thick. It's going to squish through that mesh, so you're going to use more than you think you're going to use. But on top of the mesh, it's probably only a quarter inch or so, or uh, between a quarter and an eighth. But you can see the like the fingerprints in there from patting it. I don't want that. Also, I'm just going to show you quick. I'm going to get this brush wet, and I'm going to come in. brush it to get rid of my fingerprints. I can stipple it like this. What seems to work whoop. What seems to work good for me is to brush it and then come back and just use the tips of the bristles and stipple. But this helps get rid of your fingerprints or mash it in. And then this helps get rid of brush lines. Now, if you're using slate, those brush if you're making this rock slate, those brush lines wouldn't all be wouldn't be all bad. Okay, I've got the rock all textured the way I want it. It's still wet, so I'm going to start blending the base in. The base is going to be made out of the same stuff. Okay, now it's time to look for for uh, spots that might have got a little thin, add a little more to it. Okay guys, it's still drying, but I've got everything completed. I figured I'd try to show you the rock a little more up close. 
can see some of the detail you know, these fine ridges that come out recesses crevices you can see hopefully you can see some of the detail this took more time than if I used the styrofoam and pieced a rock together um, you know that I want to say that sheet of rock is you know retail is nearly two hundred dollars so if you're using those rocks to build that you're gonna have probably all of two hundred dollars in it to build a rock this size if you order a big rock like this it's gonna cost you all of two hundred dollars so maybe a little more so the, the that can mess with your profit margin either you charge more because you use more expensive product or you charge less but it took you less time right so the, the downfall of this is it actually took more time so either I have to charge a lot more to make that time up or I just take less per hour to do that um, you know I think my profit margin on this is still going to be okay uh, the difference is I, you know, I'm not trying to make a living necessarily doing this. I just like doing it. It's it's interesting and fun to me to build stuff. I've never used this process to build a rock before. So to me, it was kind of fun and, and a learning experience. And that was worth it in itself. And I got paid to do it. So, um, you know, uh, there's a benefit there for me too. I can do something. It's totally custom. This guy's gonna can see a a thousand different bear habitats and he will not see another rock that looks like this exactly guaranteed if i bought a big rock this size i guarantee you there are other rocks out there because they're made they're mass produced if i used a bunch of little ones and built it yep probably you're not going to see another one like that either but then you know the cost is up there again so i can keep the cost down for them you know, this guy probably wouldn't have done this if he would have had to have in invested too much money into it. Uh, you know, this habitat, I just, it's $450 is what this habitat costs. That's what I'm charging him for it. So, and I know I could charge more, but, uh, you know, this guy's going to be able to display this and he'll enjoy it. And, and I'll feel good that I didn't, try to take too much money from him and you know it's something he'll he wouldn't have done if it would have cost too much money so I think he's gonna get a nice benefit out of it and I had I had fun making it and I got paid so that makes it worth it I could probably ramble more I think I'm gonna end this video here um, this episode of the bear taxidermy and we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.